Outside of that fantastic Puss in Boots sequel, it seems like DreamWorks has been sleeping for a while. Haven't heard from them. So it was actually kind of refreshing when Patreon user Owen Manning said, Adam, remember Megamind? Why don't you review it on the channel? Give you a little taste of DreamWorks of the past, in the glory days. So here we are, 2023, talking about Megamind. Let's begin. If you haven't seen this movie or even heard of it, I don't blame you, it kinda came and went unceremoniously, I think I only have to say this one thing to get you to watch. It was directed by the same guy who did Boss Baby. You're welcome. Seriously though, Megamind's solid. I saw it back in 2010 and now I got to relive it. I have to say it holds up pretty well. From a visual standpoint, not too shabby. Obviously, it doesn't have the detail we see today in films, but DreamWorks was already getting pretty solid around this era. It's really at How to Train Your Dragon 2 where I thought, okay, these guys are a serious contender. So what's this movie about? Well, in a nutshell, it's like watching a Superman movie, but instead of following the Man of Steel, we follow Lex Luthor. In this case, Lex is Megamind, a super evil genius who rose in the ranks to be the number one arch nemesis of Metro Man. He's got all your standard attributes, the power of flight, laser eyes, super strength, yada yada yada. He's a force to be reckoned with. One that has defeated Megamind time after time. I like this film because it flips everything on its head around the halfway point. Your expectations get thrown out the window and next thing you know, Megamind's trying to be a good guy. Kind of. Not really. At all. What ends up happening is Megamind succeeds in the first act of the movie, killing off his arch rival Metro Man. Now he's left with a hole in his heart. Think Lego Batman, which kind of takes the same concept of this. We have a villain who has no purpose. He's achieved his goal, taken over the city, and he's got no one to stop him. No one to challenge him anymore, and he's still in the prime of his life. So what does he do? Well, he makes a new Metro Man who he has branded Titan, played by Jonah Hill. And this is where things get very clever because Titan's a pile of crap. He has no interest in being a real superhero. He just wants all the luxury, all the accoutrements that come with it, such as the riches, such as the girl. And that's gonna be the big thing in this movie that ties all of it together. Reporter Roxanne Ritchie, voiced by Tina Fey, I'm already in love. I'm already in love with this woman. She's the focal point for both evil and for more evil. There's another reveal even later that's even better, but if you haven't seen Megamind, I don't even want to give that away. I don't want to ruin that fun surprise. So I'll just say this is a very solid story. It's engaging. I like that it keeps you on your toes, keeps kind of shifting gears, and it works very well. Now I am a stickler for plausibility in implausible situations. I know that doesn't really make sense, but there is some technology that makes me think, what, what, really? Really? Megamind's constantly turning into other people using some sort of a transformation technology, but he can actually make contact skin to skin as he is this holographic person. I mean, what are we doing here? That, that doesn't make any sense. Pushing aside all that technical issue, it's very fun seeing all the different things he comes up with. The biggest detractor for me is probably in the voice department. Some of these voice actors do not match the appearance of the character, which is rare to say. Usually in animation, the artists try to render the character to look somewhat similar to the people voicing them. Not here though. Megamind, for instance, looks like Neil Patrick Harris. I know NPH isn't blue, or an alien, as far as we know, although he's aging very well. But the physical bone structure, the facial features outside the baldness look like Neil Patrick Harris. Certainly not Will Ferrell. Then there's Metro Man. The guy's huge. He's very bulky. I know Brad Pitt's hit the gym for movies like Troy. I don't see that voice coming out of Metro Man. That looks more like a Nathan Fillion character. Jonah Hill, though, he works very well for Titan. He has that douchey voice that's coming out of his mouth. I hate him. I hate that character. I don't hate Jonah Hill. I mean, I, I hate how he's playing the character, it's perfect. David Cross is great as the genius fish minion. You have Ben Stiller showing up, Justin Thoreau, a lot of voice actors, a lot of celebrities on display here. But at the end of the day, I'm focused on the story, I'm focused on the characters, I'm focused on the animation, and it all works very well. Aesthetically, this is also somewhat close to The Incredibles. Now, not near as incredible as that movie, it's, it's hard to beat Brad Bird's cinematic achievement there. This is kind of a fun little child version of that. The movie's got a lot of good action. The jokes land for the most part. It's a quick hour and a half flick. 
easy for the whole family to watch. I see no reason not to at least check out Megamind once. Even if you're a grown ass adult like myself. Sometimes it's nice to kick back with a bowl of cereal on a Saturday morning, watch a little Megamind. That's what I suggest you do. Thanks again, Owen Mennion, for recommending this movie. Had a good time reliving it. And a massive W for being a Mithril member and supporting this channel, this one-man operation, this, this hobby of mine. If you aren't a patron, I highly suggest you become one or a YouTube Join member. There's a $1 tier, which gives you access to 300 plus exclusive videos. There's also higher tier levels like Mithril, which allow you the ability to request movies. I review them, give you a shout out. It's a good time, I think, for all parties involved. I appreciate any support you can give. Like the video if you had a good time. Please subscribe if you haven't. And hopefully I see you next time. Take care.